I spent a whole day with one of the best welders in the world. I'm showing you, so watch this. Hey everybody, we are going down to High Tech Welding, that's Chris Razor. If you remember, you look back, I had that one video where I said, and I was dead serious, if I could weld this good, I would probably quit building engines. Or at least I would do a whole lot more welding for big money. So uh, I'm at the PRI show and Chris Razor, who I've not ever met, watched that video and said, I came up to me, shook my hand, said, hey, I'm Chris Razor. I go, hey, wow, sweet, you're awesome. And he goes, you're more than welcome to ever come down there and, you know, uh, check us out and see what we do and I'll show you some stuff. Now, somebody telling me that they're going to show me stuff and that is way better than I am at something, I'm all about that. I want to go down there and uh, have him show me how to weld better. So we got this uh, one of the Viper blocks. We're doing three of these at a time. We're gonna show you all this uh, machine work on the Viper blocks. Um, I've welded up the first two and I've taken this third set down and taken the set of heads down that we're gonna machine, or that I pulled the hoops out of because we need to put different hoops in them a different size. So that is perfect work for, uh, for Chris to show me how to properly use the welders and all this other stuff. Turns out, well, he'll, he'll tell us a lot of that stuff, but the particular welder that I got, which is a Miller uh, Synchro Wave 280, he actually helped develop that machine. And he said he got, he started with, I think he said he started with number one, and before they were done, he ended up with number 78 of, you know, how many revisions and things they went through and did. So, super cool. Uh, pretty excited about going down there and, and doing this. Don't really have the time to do it, but I got. I would like to learn if I can learn how to do this better, faster. I'd be pretty pleased with that, and uh, I'm gonna get them to you know to weld up this stuff. Yeah. This is this is an oil pan yeah. for Caterpillar what? Uh, one of their big mining trucks. Big mining truck. Yeah. What do you got weld on this? Uh, they, they actually when they were saw cutting, well you can uh -huh. see, see that flanger where they had the yeah. extra material from casting. Yeah. They take a grinding wheel and cut that out while they get a little overzealous and usually catch that hole. Some are porosity, some are leaks, some are machining yeah. boo-boos, you know that kind of thing. But awesome. that's an air intake too for a turbo. That's a big turbo. Yeah, that's a big turbo. <laughs> Here before we just, so we're with Chris Razor at High Tech Welding, and I had in my head imagined something like guys standing there, well, you know what I mean, like uh, more well, booze, booze and stuff. No, one man show. One man show. I weld everything that I sell and cut comes in the door. That way. Everything. No, no mistakes, no wasted materials, nothing. Yeah, I do it all. Dang. Yeah. And I've been here, and so, I mean, I was at DART back in uh, 90, uh, 96, 7, 8, mm -hmm. and I was hearing about you then. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, I'll be 69. Really? Yeah. I'm, well, that's I'm why I was hearing year. about you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Been around a while. <laughs> yeah. Been around. Yeah. Next year would be 50 years welding professionally. 50 years yeah. welding. Yeah. Still at it. Awesome. Yeah. Holy cow. Uh. Let's let's look at the grand tour. So there's there's the front door. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. So you got your own forklift bringing in big yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. This is and so you do pretty much all the welding for for Dart. I've got sixteen pretty, bit billet heads I'm doing for them currently. Yeah. Carl Foltz, everybody, yeah. Every, you know, Rear Morrison, uh, Frankenstein, everybody across yeah. the country. Mm -hmm. Every place. Yeah. Amazing. All. Yeah. All right, there. right there. <laughs> People say that's like the center of the universe. Everything revolves around this bench. Wow, this is great. Yep. <clears throat> I used to manage a big welding company, and mm -hmm. I told myself if I ever could do, I'd be by myself. Better control. 
Yeah. Um, you weld everything like it belongs to you. Yeah. You never have a mistake. Hopefully you never have a mistake. But, Dang. <laughs> yep. I'm totally impressed. That is ball operation. Got a lot of stuff piled up. And, you know, it's that t time of the year after P PRI, they dump everything off. And, yeah. You know, and so it's all the repairs and those kind of things. But the Caterpillar thing is a year-round deal with all the infrastructure going. I, I weld several thousand oil pans a year here. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So it's a Dang. big operation. Dang. So. How many hours a day you weld? Uh, 10 or 12 or 15 or whatever it takes. So I saw you down at P PRI show. I came back that night. Then that next night I worked 17 hours. <laughs> you just got to, you know, you got to love to work. Because yeah. Because if you don't, it's not a great plan, but. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, doing definitely, it. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, not a great plan if you if you don't want to work. Yeah, exactly. Isn't, that means there's probably not going to be a lot of people doing this. No, <laughs> no. If you want to work, you need work. Yeah, exactly. God, so. there. All right, cool. Anyhow, can can uh, we bring these things in? Yeah, sure. Are they? I got a, a block right. to weld up deck, deck holes. Okay. And then uh, I also needed to weld. Uh, we took hoops out of head and just need to weld the deck surface around the hoops. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, you know somebody's hardcore when there's a, a full active shower in the bathroom. <laughs> so, <laughs> with yeah. towels hanging yeah. on it. So, it's obviously been <laughs> yeah. been staying and I used. Come, come in clean, <laughs> I go home clean. Oh, you yeah, know, there you go. You know, a lot of times I have to meet a customer and you've been welding all day. And, yeah. You know, where you're meeting somebody like Jack Rouch or some of those guys. He, he likes to show up halfway. Halfway clean, clean. yeah. yeah. Then the one thing that I see don't see here mm -hmm. is the oven. No. So I don't understand. I thought it generally seems to be generally held that you got to have an oven to preheat, post heat, and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, that's kind of old school. Uh, we used to preheat everything because the welders weren't capable of melting the aluminum. Uh -huh. And that was a real need to preheat the aluminum. But with the technology with inverters, shielding gases, you really don't need that preheat like we used to. Oh, yeah. I'll take a billet block. There's a energy block there. I well, that yeah. no no preheat. Yeah. Uh, billet heads, no no preheat. It's kind of old school. We only did it because you had to, to get the welder to get to the welder. welder to work. Yeah. All right. Okay. So ah. it's rare. I might put a little heat on this just because been in your van. Yeah, it was cold. But it's really not all that cold. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of, we always used to do it like that that yeah. way, and it, it, but things have changed. Yeah, and it's progressed. So interesting. The other thing too, if you preheat the part, and then you're welding on it for some times, you get it out of the heat tree zone, then you have a soft part at that point, or the part once you preheat it, it grows, and then you weld it, it grows some more, and when uh -huh. it shrinks, it's a different size. Oh. Does it go back? So, detrimental problems are people preheat them, they lose a heat treat, and then they go, "Oh, the welding job was bad." No, not really. Huh? So, all right. Okay. Now I do not feel bad for not ever <laughs> heating yeah. stuff up. Yeah, it's kind of old school, and, and a lot of times we did it for hydrogen inclusion. But with the shielding gases and the ability to balance the sine wave on these things now, that's really not an issue. Anyhow, we're going to set the welder up. I have several memories in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and set that on the one I would use for, you know, wet welding decks. And what this thing here is a torch changer, it's a Bert Versatig. And I bought the very first unit this, this guy made. And I've got five torches set up on here. And I can change from oh. torch to torch to torch just by do, doing this. Really? It changes the power, the gas, and the water flow. So I can go from... Uh, this torch here, a pencil torch. Yeah. Over to this torch was is kind of a port welding torch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With a flex head on it to get around corners. Yep. Short turns. Uh, yeah. Cylinder heads. All the way down to this super micro. This is the smallest water cooled torch in the world. Yeah. And it's a foot flex head. And flex head. Rated 125 amps, but with the inverter, 
I welded this thing at 400. It kind of tricks, it brings the current in from the ground into the torch rather than the torch trying to induce into the part. And you can really weld some pretty heavy stuff with this thing. Really? Yeah. So, but this thing gives me the huh. ability to, no matter what walks in the door, just to do have it, a torch so quick, to do it. Bam, yeah, bam. Done. And wow. that sets it up on the second machine there too, just to the, to oh, the right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it has the same set up. So what I do with this second welder is a good backup machine. Should this one ever go need service, I can still continue. But on that other bench, that's kind of a shelf for it right now. I'll set up a job and I can leave it set up on that table weld for this welder. A lot of times you'll, you'll start a job, um, have to let it cool go back to it so you can dedicate that on that bench yep without constantly putting a yeah, job yeah. on there taking a job taking off. It off yeah and it just makes a nice backup machine oh then what what material rod do you use i'm going to use 5356 on this oh that's what i've been using okay yeah. it's a good color match the problem with it is it has very low silicon content it actually has nothing it tends to crack a lot oh it heat cracks okay so you gotta really be careful of that in situations um Everyone's at you usually after you know good color match. Uh, fifty three, fifty six get used to the same hardness as a pair of metal. Okay. So I should have brought a helmet. Do you have an extra helmet I could lift through? No, I don't actually. Oh my gosh, that's it. Tony yeah. only has one, one helmet. helmet. Oh, that old junk went up there. I wouldn't <laughs> put that on a dog's head. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. What we're gonna do on these is what I tend to do is go along the edge. And I melt that and let that fall down a couple hundred thousands yep. to build that wall in there. It's probably what you, you've done in the yep. past. So. Yep, and we're getting these uh, round holes, this one and this one too. Oh, okay. Yep. So okay. All, all the water, it's on dry deck in okay. the pool. Thing. Okay, all right. Yep. Okay. Let's start up here though. We'll do this. I was watching the amperage you're at, and mm -hmm. it's like 250-ish amps or right yeah. around there. Mm -hmm. Why is it so loud? Because I'm running, uh, I'm running at uh, at two, 200, 200 hertz. hertz. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So typically, I'm, what kind of machine are you using? That 280. Oh, the 280? Yeah. Well, I like two, 200 hertz. What what do you run your hertz at? Uh, I'm usually in that 70 or 80 range. Oh, really? Okay. I, yeah. That puts you to sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, I usually run to 200. So that means that arc is going back and forth between the tip of here and that part 200 times a second. So that allows you to keep a narrower bead. Yeah. And allows you to be more precise. Okay. And what size tungsten is that? Three, 332. So when it when it runs through the inverter like that, then you can use, obviously you can use a lot smaller tungsten. Yes, and exactly. use all the heat, and then you can have more uh, smaller arc and right, control. Yeah, you can arc. see how small the ball is on that, you know, and it'll stay I that know. way unless you touch it. You know, I anyone mean, says they don't it. touch, it's a liar. Be, yeah. But you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, it'll stay a lot like that. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. So. Can I turn my machine up to two hundred? I've never. Oh yeah. That. Oh yeah. That I I uh, actually did the lab work on the 280 for Miller yeah before they launched it and I had it for a year okay started with beta unit 5 ended with 70 yeah, yeah. it goes to 200 Hertz okay in fact I think it goes 300 now all oh, right wow. yeah huh so the faster the arc you know it's a little more ear piercing yeah disgusting do you want some earplugs I have earplugs so. no I'm fine okay I think I'm putting mine in I've got to put mine in I try to wear them all the time because when you're at this all day long oh yeah So I'm going to stop right right there, and you can see how thick I'm building that water jet jacket wall. Oh yeah. So you end up with just about the th thickness that you would have in the cast, you know. Yeah.
even though we've done all that welding, this, you put your hand right right here. It's still, maybe a little warm up there, but no, no, yeah, what? Not this one. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is to keep the heat out of the part. That keeps the heat treat there, keeps the bra the block size. You're not changing anything. It's about oh. how quickly you melt it and get off it. About BTUs. Okay. The longer you weld on, the more BTUs it takes. Get in and get more, out. Yeah, get in, get out. Huh. So hit it really, hit it really hot and hot. go at oh, it. Yeah. And a lot of that's the inverter along with the proprietary shielding gases I use. So. I don't have your proprietary shielding gases. I know, and you're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, before you hit that back, yeah. is that explaining also why I have not cleaned this? I mean, I, you didn't clean it. Nope. So, I'm really interested on the cylinder heads around the deck surface because I didn't clean that. I mean, it's just not doesn't have well, oil on it, obviously. But, right, I mean, it's not right. like we're... It, yeah, but it's this clean... That, that's got water the stain in it. Yeah, but the inverter has the ability to break that up and disperse that. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I'm just processing things. Sure, sure. It's, it's a lot to process. It is. I mean, it's different. You know, if that was really crusty, but this block's in great shape. And I, I can burn that, melt that stuff out. And a little bit of that stuff is here along the edges. Okay. You can see a little bit on top. Yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit of that dross. But it's not in the welds on top. Right. You deck that off, it's gone. Wow, okay. Yeah, as long as they're not gr greasy or really scaly, you know, the inverter really takes care of that. Okay, so here I just went around the, the edge of the hole to show you the cleaning factor that's, that arc has. And a lot of that's a shielding gas too. So that, this hole looked like this with a little rust, a little, you know, oxidation, but you can burn right through that. Dang. I mean, it's, it sounds hot. I mean, it's not... It sounds hot because it hurts. Let me turn it down to what you run yours at and see if that's <laughs> worth liking. What that tends to do is slow down the welding process too. Oh. The the hearse is about speed. Okay. So let's see if this sounds like Steve Morris shop. <laughs> Steve Morris shop. It's the, the, yeah, it's, that put it, me to sleep. It, yeah, it's definitely slower, it's definitely but slower. it still it still sounds uh, different than yours. It does. It sounds. Uh, Crisper? No, it sounds like wow. It's got a lot more. It sounds like there's well, a lot more air going. Or is okay. that the gas? No, that's a, that's a shielding gas. Okay, okay, so the shielding gas is causing the noise difference too because okay. I that's run a helium yeah uh, mi mixture, and so it does the sound factor is different. Okay, maybe that's, that's why it's a little more piercing than straight argon would be. It does okay. have a factor. Yeah, to I'm it. only welding with straight argon. Yeah. And if you're welded with straight argon, believe it or not, I've always found that uh, get a high purity argon, a little more money, another 40, 50 bucks, but it tends to weld better. Oh, really? Yeah, it makes okay. a difference, so. Okay. Do you do stainless or do you really steel oh, yeah. welding? Stainless, titanium, do do, do everything. Mm, titanium, huh? Do you use the same? Uh, is the gas your your shielding gas always the same? Uh, it's always the same, but always on aluminum only. You know, steel, titanium, all, all that would be straight argon. Oh, that's just straight argon. Yeah, just like normal. Ah, okay, yeah. gotcha. The helium only gives you the benefit of the aluminum side. Mm-hmm. You can use on thick sections of stainless, but you're talking like three or four inch thick stainless stuff. It's the only time you'd add a little bit of helium yeah, to your... Well, weld three, four mm -hmm. inch thick helium or stainless? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. With that weld? Yeah. With that torch? Mm-hmm. How, how far does it... This is a Speedway torch, 
it's the size of a 200 amp torch, but it's rated for three, 320 amps. Yeah. But I run it at 400 all day long. Huh. So it gives you that small size, but big amperage. Yeah. How far does, like, on a piece of three inch thick stainless, how far does that penetrate then? Well, that would all have to be chamfered. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah. Oh, so you're build, build, building, you're building, building it back, back up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. All right. Like I said before, I'm going to be putting RevX oil engine treatment in every engine that we send out. So I worked out a deal with the guys over at RevX. They are giving us, so every engine is going to leave with RevX oil treatment and their diesel gold treatment deal. And you'll see in the crate or in your engine or even pa other packages that we do, the discount code right here. You can scan that QR code. Either side takes you right to the site. They have a lot of other products. Now, why am I using this stuff? I'm using this stuff because I have seen really good results with it. Better bearing wear, better valve train wear. Valve train wear on all drag and drive stuff is crucial, important. Remember, if you have valve train wear issues, push rod cups, tips, rocker arm tips, bearings, fulcrums, anything in that whole valve train area, it is a oil problem. This is absolutely going to help alleviate it and make sure you got a good quality oil, but this absolutely will help you. So that's why we're putting these things in there. I believe in the product. So I've worked with them. They are gonna be able to send uh, one in one. Uh, diesel treatment works really good too. I use it in the motor home or in the motor home and use it in the uh, my truck too. So make sure that you go to the website, click on the Steve Morris discount code. When you go to check out, it's gonna give you another 10% off. Anyways, I'm Steve Morris, back to the video. I need to get a wire. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the only way to go. One less wire to... I know, trip over and yeah. cut. And... Yeah, get caught on something, you need yeah. to jerk it, it comes out of the foot pedal. Oh, no, neat. it's the best thing they've ever done, and it is just as accurate as old corded. Really? When I first got it, I go, well, we've got to have some lag to it. You know, amperage, when you run into that edge and you really need to get off of it, no, you, just the That's same. really good. Huh. Yeah. Excellent. You're much faster so at this. I do a lot... Uh, <laughs> Pardon me? I said you're much faster at this than I am too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do a lot of work at steel mills. The other thing I weld is water-cooled copper bus tubes at electric arc furnaces. Okay. I'm getting ready to go do one next month at in Arkansas at U.S. Steel. And um, having a, a wireless foot pedal up in a man lift when you're 40, 50 feet in the air in, oh, a, yeah. in a bucket, one less cord to manage. Um, and so they really work out nice. How much time do you spend here versus traveling? Um, I'm, I'm here 90% of the time. The steel mill stuff is typically, you know, every other year. I've done, uh, this will be three new steel mills in four years, which oh. is the most I've done. But I've been doing that since 1978 all yep. over the world. Yeah. Um, but here in the States mainly. Wow. So. Now, we didn't spend a lot of time talking about this copper welding. But Chris is one of five people in the country 
that are able to do this type of welding and he trained the other four guys. Now there might be some other guys that are out there that have started the kind of offshoots, but he is the original one in the country that has been able to weld this copper. Now this copper, each one of these uh, 12 inch diameter, one inch thick copper pipes takes eight hours to weld the one seam all the way around on the floor and up in the air here, you're gonna see. So each one of these took eight hours each, a solid day. So some of them are on the floor and then others are 50, 60 foot up in the air, like where you're standing right up here on the platform. So extremely cool. And what you see back here on the this tube, this is a electrical connection. This is a water cooled electric conduit. So all of the power that goes into the steel mill to heat up the electrode goes through this copper tube millions upon millions of volts and amps they don't know exactly what it is but millions and millions of uh volts whatever it's astronomically amazing so much so that you have to run water through it to cool it because it gets so hot carrying all the voltage and amperage and what is so hard about welding copper well obviously there's only five people or so in the country that can do it there's a couple outside of the country that can do it i guess but this is loosely paraphrased Chris isn't going to tell me all of it. This is 800 amps, eight hours to weld this seam. Some special mix of uh, uh, gas and copper obviously absorbs all the heat that you put to it. That's why they're making it electric conduit. So you're trying to weld something that's trying to absorb all the heat. So it is, uh, at, and it melts away so fast, yet takes the heat away so fast. It's, it's an amazing thing. Now, let's get back to the video. Any more questions? Or No, not yet. No? Okay. <laughs> I could just see the curiosity in your mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah. So. You still like, you still like this? I still like it. I'm not going to retire. Um, I tell people when you love what you do, it's really not work. Yeah, yeah. And, and stuff walks in the door here that is just amazing. Everything from, you know, SpaceX to um, NASA. I've done some work for, for them. And now Williams International, the cruise missile. Mm -hmm. people and, and just and they find me i don't go looking and yeah, that, yeah you just don't know what you're going to do the, you know today or tomorrow so steve, along, steve along, morris pops in shows up yeah steve morris <laughs> pop, pops up here we are <laughs> welding and um it, it right down to helping the guy the little bracket racer or the uh -huh. gentleman with a oh. broken wheelchair or... i was looking through oh really i was yeah. looking through here and did you do racing yourself were you racing no no, no? i stay away from it that's a good way of wasting money. That's for yeah, sure. yeah. I see what it does to everybody else. I go, ooh, that, I don't want to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. This is my tungsten grinder. The diamond wheel inside that little slot. So you get the right angle on it. There's a, there's a right angle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's supposed to be a correct angle. <laughs> really? Yeah. What, is a, what is the correct angle? Uh, about, I use 60 degree included oh. angle, so. Do you buy it? They, Do you buy that thing from Milwaukee like that? Yeah. Well, not, not, not from Milwaukee. It's from, uh, Arc Zone. Oh. They're, that's, it's basically a Milwaukee tool with their, mm -hmm. with their head on. You, you can adjust the angle. Then you can, you got a cutoff point and a blunter and you can cut, cut it off the tungsten in here. What's the. Different what's, sizes. What's the angle do? It takes those thing. electrons and it funnels it down to the tip of the tungsten. Okay. So the, it's just a personal pr preference, but the more blunt it is, that arc I think tends to jump off to the sides. So I try to sharpen it like a, a pencil. Right. That type of angle, like a three to one. To make it really get focused in. Focused in thick. and go right, right down there. And grinding the lines parallel to the center line affects the flow of the electrons too in the arc start. Yeah, that that one I knew. That one yeah, I knew. because a lot of guys put it on a... Now you can't do it circular. Yeah, it makes the that spark arc, go all yeah, over the place. correct. Yeah, until it balls up. But yeah. then... Uh, yeah. Then, then you're okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Actual degree matters. All self-taught. All self-taught. Not a not an hour classroom. That's what I would figure. Um, just learned, listened, watched, asked questions. Yeah. Continue to learn, e even today. I'm still learning stuff. Oh, yeah.
What's important on these is because you're putting that bigger hat in here, right? Yeah. It's a subsurface weld from here down because you're, you're going to remove all right. this. So if we went, you know, say from, from here down a quarter, quarter inch, you're going to take most of that out of there. So I'm like laying that weld down in there deeper. Right. So when you put those hats in there, you still have that seal. Yeah. How are you getting it in there deeper necessarily? I mean, are you just I can actually the tungsten way down way down in there? there? Yeah, I'm burying that tungsten way down in there. And melt melting from the bottom up. Hmm. I I, I kind of nickname subsurface welding. I do a lot of welding that subsurface. You're doing the welding down there, mm -hmm. then you work work your way out. So it helps to have the smaller uh, smaller cup and smaller. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Sure. And aluminum is less uh, reactive than like steel would be. So so you can bring this tungsten out a little bit, okay. and get down in those real tight spots. And that's just a number five cup. Okay. Which is kind of my standard cup on aluminum. Okay. Let me take a look at those heads real quick. I forget what the white look like. Oh yeah. Okay, there's plenty. Yeah, I, I want to be, be sure they had enough land in between there. So you welded those out with a piece of stainless? Yeah, I just stick a piece of rod to it and yeah, get it out. Yeah. Yeah. How about all the seats? Do you weld those out or you machine them out? No, we would normally Normally, I would just machine them out, but I would like to try to probably weld them out. Yeah. Do you actually add material or you just mm -hmm. put heat just in melt them? Just heat them, melt them, especially on that beryllium, because that's 65% copper. Oh, and it'll just melt right away? Uh-huh, yeah, typically oh. does. Really? No, I've never done that. Well, you just hit it with a tick torch and mm -hmm. just knock it out. Mm-hmm. Save a lot of machining tools. That would I mean, save a lot of time. Tool bits and a lot of time. Yeah. You yeah. got to be quick about it. You got to get on it and melt it because you don't want it to transfer the heat to the bore. Right. Screw up the bore. Yeah. Okay. And then on sleeves, so like if you were going to uh, weld the sleeve out, you just, you're just you just hitting it harder with, the with heat. And I actually melt you, or the sleeves out. I actually melt the sleeve out. Yeah. How do you melt the sleeve? Uh, so Put a tick torch. Yeah. It's say iron. say say you're trying to weld a thin piece of steel and it burns away on you. Same same theory, but you want that to happen. Really? Yeah. Huh. I, I burn them out. It's quicker. You can weld beads around it. So, sometimes there's so much press in them, especially up, up at the top, it, it won't enough. shrink it up enough. And uh, I just burn them out. Take torch. Take torch. Just, yep. Get out of here. That's pretty cool. Stay <laughs> stay away from the china wall. You know the yeah. tight wall. You know, do it a thicker section. Yeah. Yeah, I just burn burn them out it's quicker. Huh. All right. Now you're learning a lot here today. Well, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Now, do you use the 5356 on billet stuff too? No. What do you use on billet? That billet's. I use a, a 4043. Oh, yeah. And then it goes to heat treat. You know, um, one of my customers uses a dead soft billet machine that had, I weld the plates, it goes to heat treat. Right. And in that process, anytime I tried 5356, going through the heat treat process, it, they would crack. Because right. those plates are expanding at a different rate than that thick billet. Yep. And there's no silicon in it. And so for that application, it's it's best just to use that that rod okay allows it to flex okay and and even when they're uh, when they're running and the engine's torquing and stuff it has that flexibility still okay. in the weld joint and 40 and 40 32 yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay You might want to try to upgrade your shielding gas to maybe a, a little bit of helium in it. Right. You know, at least 25% or 50-50 right. on heavier aluminum. It'll make a big difference for you. 
It's hard to get a helium. Oh, and there's an international shortage for I years. Know. Unless you have a contract about mine, you can't get it. That's what, yeah, I know. I might. And these cylinders, those aqua color ones, those are 625 a piece. And I can burn two a day. Jeez, old Pete. Yeah, it's really why affected is, the Why closet. is there a shortage of helium? Okay, long story. The, the government owned the refinery. You refine, you get helium off natural gas, refining natural gas. Huh? That refinery was 150 years old. It had been fixed so many times I couldn't fix it anymore. It just was, wasn't worth it. So they shut that down, and we've been living off the reserves that they pumped back into the natural gas wells through the pipelines and been living on those reserves for about 10 years. Really? About 15 years ago, and now those reserves are very low. So they built a new refinery out in Wyoming. The problem is it was a you know, multi-billion dollar investment and so the price of the gas pays for that then there was uh katrina hit in the, in the gulf all those natural gas wells they lost there no more refining of that natural gas so it was a multi-headed problem now we're actually importing helium from Qatar in the middle east and there's a tariff on it still you know the foreign administration had those tariffs put on so now there's a tariff on it and the availability is just the volume when Russia attacked Ukraine, Russia was a big supplier of helium to Europe. Well, Russia cut that off. And so now some of the supplies we used to get are going to, to Europe. Huh. Okay. And so it's been a, a quagmire of problem after problem. Luckily, this past year, air gas especially has brought on another supplier of helium from somewhere. But the price went, went up another 15%. But I can get as much of it as I want. I'd been on an allocation about 40% of what I used to use. So I would have to really say, okay, what can I weld today and still have enough helium to get the most dollars out of that? Mm -hmm. You don't want to start welding dark billet heads because you don't have enough helium to finish that job. But yeah, I got 20 other heads here I can't do with them. And so you kind of allocate, and I had to allocate who got what welded. So things took longer. Well, well now it's more pricey but the benefit i told my customers is the fact that now you get your parts back quick quicker because i'm not constantly dancing i used to go to saginaw get one bottle i went to indianapolis one day to get a bottle Dang. and uh, i was doing this big allison transmission for the military and a new tank they're building and i didn't have the helium and now i said oh we'll get you helium we're allison i said you won't you won't be able to get any he called me th back three days later and says you're absolutely right i can't get helium he said, we're a military contractor. I said, I don't know. Just there isn't any. Huh. So, yeah, I think it was a, that was a Thursday. I'm at Money Call. He said, I found a tank in Indianapolis. We're going to ship it to you. I said, great. Just be sure it's, you know, certified stuff, not uh, industrial grade mix. And they sent it up. I saw the bill was $1,800 for the one cylinder. Plus the freight, plus return freight of that cylinder. So it's been a real, real pr problem. So a lot of the balloon stores went out of business because mm -hmm. they couldn't get helium. And that's why you see a lot of balloons things on trellises now or on stakes because yep. the helium isn't available. And Walmart and General, Do uh, General Dollar had a national contracts. They got deliveries, you know, weekly or bi-monthly or however. And they were kind of hoarding it because it'd be in their warehouse. And, you know, and they had all these cylinders of helium when we couldn't find any to weld with. Right. So, and the other big factor is MRI machines use liquid helium to shroud the magnets and to cool the units. And because helium is the smallest molecule, those electronic, electrical currents go back and forth through it easily. So it had better imaging and everything. Well, there's MRI machines everywhere now. Huh. Where, where before they were in hospitals. Right. You know, now they're on portable semi-trucks. But they use a lot of helium. Huh. So and then the military uses it. So. Oh, there. Yeah. I, so. Thought, I thought that the helium just did uh, allow it to be hotter. It does. But it, does it does it help with the cleaning and stuff? Or is that it just does because of the heat. It, 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 just it the reduces, heat. Yeah, the heat sheds the off heat? that. It sheds off that um, um, oxidation quicker. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. But the helium issue, you look it up, helium shortage, it's quite oh, right. an amazing story. No one realized how critical helium is to our daily lives. Yeah. And then uh, the battery bit manufacturer, when they started manufacturing electric car batteries, they were testing the cells with helium. 
because it's the smallest mo molecule. Well, that became too, too expensive, so they went back to nitrogen for testing. Um, but yeah, it's been a big, big problem. Okay. And when we weld copper, we weld with pure helium. I use late laser grade helium. So on each one of these furnaces, there's two two furnaces. Each one will consume about ninety bottles of helium to weld that copper pipe. Really? Yeah. So it's huge expense. Wow. So when I worked at Crazy. company in uh, Romulus, and they moved over to Inkster, but we had two great big tanks. They called bullets on the side of the building. They were forty feet long and two feet in diameter, and we were using more helium than anyone east of the Mississippi, except for the military, <laughs> welding all that copper. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm just going to do a quick buff up on here because there's okay. these. Kind of... Yeah. You know, the old days, the old welders had a hard time welding that, but the new new stuff, it's not that big of a deal. Huh? I mean, you don't want to be welding oily stuff or, you know, crappy, yeah. but this is more than clean. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm using a different 5000 series rod that I usually use on the top fuel heads. And I do a lot of O-ring work, a lot harder than that. And the machine's nice. It'll be a little brighter in color, shinier, because it's harder. That's right. But that, that way you don't have to worry about if you're on the edge of that new weld and the parent metal. I think that's a bit better choice. All right. And what was that? I can't tell you that number. <laughs> Sorry. So these bridge areas, so sometimes it burns over the side of the chamber. Yep. And, um, well, these are fairly far away, but it's still going to burn a little bit. I'm trying to keep it to a minimum. So you'd be sure if you ever use a cleaner. A lot of people use acetone. Yeah, I use acetone. Yeah, that's fine, too. Okay. But if you use a brake brake clean, be sure it's non-chlorinated. Non-chlorinated. Yeah. All right. It's critical. Uh, you got what, how much pressure do you put through there? Uh, Gas pressure. I'm putting uh, almost 100 cubic feet an hour. 100 cubic feet an hour. Because the helium is four times lighter than argon. So if you're flowing argon at, say, 25 cubic feet per hour, you got to multiply that by four to get the same amount of coverage. Because that helium is coming out of that nozzle and going straight up. Oh. So you got to be sure you have enough volume to push it down. Oh, that's why I use so much. I yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Because okay. Okay. there's only, like, now there's only 260 cubic feet in a tank. Charge more money, have less volume, you know, Perfect. like toilet paper, <laughs> you know, but, uh, so that's an issue. So. Okay. Sometimes super th thin stuff, like thin stainless, I'll hyper pulse it like two or three hundred pulses a second. And it helps that stainless freeze in, in the puddle in a nanosecond. You know how stainless, if you miss, it gets, it opens up? Mm -hmm. Well, if you hyper pulse, it stops a lot of that. That's how a lot of the appliance manufacturers take well that stuff. Oh, can I hyper pulse on my machine? Yeah, you should be. 280? Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think I need to pay a visit out there and we. Yeah. Set some th things up for you. Yep. So obviously, I got to turn my freak number way up. Cause way up. That that is what's causing me some grief. See how fast that is? You well enough to, it's, to realize yeah, it's how fast. fast it is. Yeah, it's fast and it um low profile. Yes, that's what I was getting at. Such a low profile. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the the freak number and you're on you're on it pretty hard, is like right. 180 amps right around yeah. there, so and and then it keeps it contained. So mm -hmm. and, and I did see gas. I did see a dab at once. 
Yeah, I did. Do you hear it? <laughs> I <Yeah>. saw you. <laughs> Anyone says it doesn't? Lie. I know they're like yeah, they you, lie. you, because you, you, he holds the tungsten so astronomically close oh, to the part. Mm -hmm. that, that's uh, I, a key. I, I do not have the con hand control yet yeah. to do something like that. That's why. That's a key because you want all those amperage, all that amperage, go right to that part as quick as you can. When you pull that thing up, you spread the heat cone like this. It just opens the heat. What you're trying to heat right. this whole area, you long, it's called the long arc. You get that too too far away, it's a long arc. That's why you weld that 180 amps because all those amps are going right in there. Right. You're not wasting anything. Right. And so. And, and when I'm because I'm using that lower freak, it balls up. Balls big up. ball. Yeah. And then it See, so that makes a big how small. small that is so small. With that amperage. Driving it like there's that. There's a little teeny weeny ball yeah. right there on the end of it, and normally, Gets I mean, big. it'll get it'll get as big as the tungsten. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's actually oh, bigger yeah. than the bigger, tungsten. Yeah. And then it just makes this big, fat right. flame. Right, and it just spreads more heat into the part, makes it hard to control, makes it hard to. You want to put That's that well to a certain spot, it it's going everywhere. Yep. So multiple passes is fine. So that first pass, I bury the root root pass. Be sure I'm in. Oh yeah, there. way in deep. And then I come back and build that edge up inside the cylinder. I mean inside the chamber. Yeah. And then I spread that out and I'm pushing the arc out to be sure that it, we have a good wash at the toe of the weld. Oh, and one yeah. one other question for you then. Uh, uh, you're pushing. I push, but I've seen some guys that that pull and take. You can, you yeah, you, you can. Um, Just preference, it doesn't really matter. Preference, it, that's what's so nice about TIG. You can do it <laughs> forward, backwards. Um, I tend, you know, nothing wrong, wrong with that. I don't do a lot of that pulling. I do, if you're in a hole and you're working yourself back out of the hole, yeah. fine. But for something in the open where you're clear, uh, I, I, I don't see the advantage to it. I think it's slower. Because you're trying it is, to... It is slower. You're trying to... Make a puddle and get that weld kind of, I mean, the filler rod either in the, which would be the back edge of the puddle. Right. You know, a little more di difficult. I'm worried about where you put that rod at if there's a cold spot underneath where you introduce that, that rod. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't do, do it that much. Yeah. Did you see it? Oh yeah. Spin it off? No, I said, yep. Was that the spark? Yeah, it had a momentary quick flash. I, I saw the spark on here. Yeah, that it spit it off. It's yeah. rare to spit it off, but it happens. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, really good hand, really good hand control, and the proper settings, which I've not been doing, have gone the wrong way. I was going backwards on that hole. I know where I was doing wrong. So I was, when am I doing that? Frequency is so low and then my cup is so big and that's why I'm getting so, so wide and so big and it, my heat was all wrong and it falls up wrong. So yeah, just, just, I'm excited to whack my uh, freak all the way up there. Yeah. And then uh, get that smaller cup. No, I'm because it always wants to build up, you know? So I mean, it's, I understand what's going on now. Right, right. I can't remember now if it's a newer one or not, if you can split your amperage, you know, so much positive, so much negative. I don't think you can do that, but you can do different sine waves on, on the machine too now. I think, I think there's, my, this machine is probably uh, uh, five years old, five, six years old. Might have a little more advanced. Does it have a SD port on it like this? No. Okay, it's no older but model then. So what this is, they can update software and stuff on that. Oh, really? Or if you have a pr problem, you can put a, a drive in there, oh, download it, it and then upload it to Miller. Oh. They'll write a patch on that, and you stick it back here and plug, plug it in. Oh, really? That's how high tech they've got. Oh, that's pretty fancy. Yeah, <laughs> freaky, yeah. So, but I'm not so, see on this one, I can split, I can run 400 amps uh, negative, 400 amps positive, which I do on 
on deck work like this so you don't see any bead shades or shadows of beads. If you get into some of the other pro programs like this one here, this is a real heavy dig one. So I'm running 400 amps net negative and 350 amps positive. So that means there's more electrons going through the ground clamp into the table to the torch. So it kind of helps like preheat the head kind of theory. Okay. And then here I'm running a, a balance, which I run the pro set. That's really a good balance set. That's probably what's on your, your machine. 75, yeah. yeah. And yeah, no, I know I don't have, I don't have the E and E. e okay. So, but I think you still have the ability to run this one at three, 300 Hertz. I've never really got that high. Yeah. yeah. Listen what this sounds like, this while we're here. How oh, high that is? Mm -hmm. but what that does is give you a smarter, narrower bead because that arc has to go back and forth 300 times a second. So its time on the part is a much narrower space. Right. So okay. it's a it's a lot of things to figure, but um, this this setting here is basically like a synchro wave, very balanced, very neutral, and I'm running a soft wave on the one side. And so that's a combination of advanced square wave and a true balance. Yeah, so it'd be nice to see where your machine's at, you know. Yeah. It's kind of okay. set that up and go over that. Dirtier? Dirtier as a casting, not on the surface, just mm. internally. That's how you're supposed to weld it. I'm getting to figure out how to do that. I got the keys. Okay, so we, uh, Chris just finished up everything for us, and we're just about getting ready to leave. And he goes, hey, he says, you want to weld with, he we're talking about helium. And he goes, you want to weld with helium? I go, well, yeah, that, I'll, I'll try that. And so what we're going to do here is, because I don't know uh, his machine, the, all the settings he's got are so dramatically different from what I've been doing, because I've been doing it wrong. So uh, we're going to set it up, and he's just going to have me weld on argon, first which is what i normally weld on and then he's going to turn on top secret he would have to kill me if he told me exactly what it was helium something or other <laughs> top secret science crap and then do that and so like uh you're going to do it live while i'm while i'm running I have to turn one bottle off turn the other one on oh, okay okay so we'll have to momentarily stop but oh, okay that's fine okay there there will be enough in the system that once I switch you over, when you start up, there'll still be argon in the line. So you'll you'll start out with pure argon, and then it'll switch over to helium. So yeah, it okay. will be kind of as you go. Okay. This freaking helium is astronomically expensive right now. Go look it up, helium shortage, and you can figure it out yourself. But that that is a what is that a forty pound bottle? They're supposed no, to be forty. It's three hundred cubic feet. Okay. In that bottle. And list price is 600 bucks. 600, 600 bucks for that bottle. If you can get it. I mean, you, you the regular guy just can't go in and buy that. You've got to be under contract for multiple years to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, I can't go buy helium uh, at my welding shop because I've never bought helium before. I can backdoor it <laughs> through, yeah. a bud, through a buddy of mine that's got a contract, but... Or might be? be able to get through, <laughs> through Chris. <laughs> I wasn't even talking about Chris. <laughs> oh, let's let's hit the foot pedal. I want to get the helium out, out of here. Now listen to this. Hear that high pitch? Hear the argon? The difference in just the tone of the oh, gas? Oh, the tone changes. Shh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's argon, okay? So let's take your foot off that. You don't want to zap yourself. Let me pull that tungs down a little bit. I had it really tight for that O-ring well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he's got the Darth Vader hat on. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that feels pretty normal. Okay, now that does make a nicer, tighter beat. Yes, it does. The frequency. That's that's actually not. I mean, that's simple welding, but I mean... Okay, now I'm turning the, uh, off the argon off. Okay. So it'll start out on some argon that's yeah, left in the line. Yeah, I'm going to purge this, so I don't want to contaminate it. Okay, there's still argon in the line going to the welder. So now I'll, I'll turn the heat 
helium on, as you'll see the instant difference when that helium hits. Okay. Yeah. How much faster it is? Mm -hmm. You back off on the I amperage about yeah, 50 amps. Yeah, I backed off a bunch right here. Yeah. So I moved through pretty quick. Huh. Well, I don't know if I just got better or if it, if that is, I mean, this is a little that's, inconsistent. That's, this is probably because I'm going faster. Faster, more heat input. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, now, now cool. hang on a second. Okay. Um, let's see if we can do this. I just want you to listen to the gas frequency, the, the sound that difference. Okay, hit, hit the pedal, but don't don't put that torch on anything. We just want to purge that gas though. So. That went helium. Yep, and they hear it. Argon. Okay, so now we're going to go the opposite way. I want you to listen to it. Okay. Hear that difference? It's almost a difference you hear in a frequency while you're welding. It's that much pitchier. Yeah. That's what the helium does. So it's the it's the, the weight extra energy. of the it's the weight of the helium that makes yeah. it sound yeah it it's flowing sounds lighter yes mm -hmm. huh. not as dense as argon. Huh. That is really pretty interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Well, when you get a chance, you come yeah. up there, yeah, and then we'll go through my welder. And uh, we do a little video on that because that's really important for people online that don't have a clue, or maybe set it once, or their buddy set it for them, and are stuck. You know. Yes, I am. I guarantee you I'm just currently using it the way just is yeah I just just i was thinking about it earlier i just i've been muscling my way through it correct just correct. yeah all right i'll just yeah, i'm yeah, chain yeah. changing my whatever that just i'm just muscling my way through it i don't understand i don't she doesn't understand either yeah <laughs> siri, siri does not understand yeah. muscling your way through it <laughs> all right awesome we're gonna make the long trip back home yeah, it's been great. I appreciate it. No problem. And the train, the train, invaluable. I mean, it's uh, it, you just this is fifty years of understanding and learning that you can't simulate. Can't you just can't do that kind of stuff. So I, I greatly appreciate it. You're it's welcome. Awesome. Anytime. It's gonna up my skills. Mm -hmm. And then now, now I will leap past Kyle and his skills. Ah, there you go. And I won't tell him stuff until he watches the video or <laughs> he come up and then he'll figure it out. Because he'll be he'll be over there still still taking at 70 hertz and I'll be able to go Wee! Yeah. at 200 and he'll be coming over, well, what, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell him. Yeah, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> he'll figure it out on his own. Yeah. So, That's all right. Good. So, we're heading back. Um, I'm Steve Morris. Chris, Chris Razor. Razor. Have a great day.